Okay, we're going to start right on number 11. What you did last night for homework was to solve these combined systems by um, using your calculator. And so now we're just going to solve them by hand. So the, number 11 tells us to do the, we're going to use these steps and we're going to solve number 9 again. So you've already solved it, you solved it with your calculator, but we're just going to solve number 9 by hand. So the first thing to do is to set the two equations equal to each other. So I have 4 over x minus 3 equals 2x minus 6. Step number two says clear the fractions by multiplying both sides by the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 3 in order to clear the fraction. So on the left hand side that cancels the denominator which was the point. On the right hand side what am I going to have to do? Foil. So once you FOIL it out, I've got 4 equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 18. Everybody okay so far? Okay, so now at this point, it is just solving an equation. It just so happens that this equation is quadratic. And in order to solve a quadratic equation, we have to move everything to one side and set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 4. And I'll have 0 equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 14. Now, here it does have a GCF equal to, and I would do factor out the GCF and try to factor it. But they gave us a clue on this one that we have to use the quadratic formula because this one doesn't factor. If it factors, factor right here. But it, this one doesn't. They told us it doesn't. So we're going to go ahead and move to the quadratic formula because they're telling us we have to. So I put it up here just in case you have forgotten it. But if you have forgotten it, please go back and re-memorize it because you need to know it. My A value is 2. My B value is negative 12. And my C value is 14. You can factor out a GCF and get different A, Bs, and C values and it'll work the same either way. I'm just going to have to simplify my fraction of since I didn't factor out a GCF. Okay, so now I'm just going to plug into the quadratic formula. So negative negative 12 is going to be positive 12. Plus or minus the square root of negative 12 squared minus 4 times 2 times 14. All over 2 times 2. And now I'm just going to simplify this. I'm not going to plug it into my calculator, not all as one piece. Because I want the most exact answer I can get, so I'm going to try to simplify radicals if I can. If you want to put all this stuff underneath into your calculator, you can do that, just to make it a little faster. So right now I have 12 plus or minus the square root of 32 over 4. 32 is not a perfect square. But I can tell that it breaks down. I know that it's not prime either. So I'm going to try to break it down. So I'm just going to come over to the side here and break that down. Any way you want. Whatever works for you. I'm going to do 2 and 16. And I'm going to break it all the way down to prime factors. I've got two groups of 2's and then one 2 that's by itself. So that means I end up with 4 square root of 2. So I'm going to rewrite this as 12 plus or minus 4 square root of 2 over 4. Now to simplify further because all of my outside numbers are divisible by 4. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you get 3 plus or minus square root of 2. Now, when we did this by hand, or with our calculator, we got decimals. Those are decimal approximations, and if you remember, we rounded. I told you to round two decimal places. So, but when you actually went to it, the decimals just went on forever in your calculator, or as long as your calculator would hold. I just want to see if my exact answer, 3 plus the square root of 2 and 3 minus the square root of 2, is the same as the decimal answer I got. So I'm just going to put 3 plus the square root of 2 in my calculator. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I got 4.414. Uh, 4 I think we just went to two decimal places. Now. So x equals 4.41. And x equals, I'm going to do 3 minus the square root of 2. And I got 1.59, which is what I got when I plugged it in my calculator. Y'all good so far? Yes. Okay, one more step, because remember the answer to these problems are actually ordered pairs. And right now I don't have an X and a Y, I have two X's. That's because this crosses the graph at two places. So I have to take my X values and plug them back in to either equation, doesn't matter which one, and find my Y values. Choose the easier equation. It doesn't matter, you'll get the same answer either way, but obviously we'll want to do the easy thing. So the easiest equation is y equals 2x minus 6. So that's where I'm going to plug my x values. So I'm going to do y equals 2 times 4.41 minus 6. So I got 2.82. So my first ordered pair is the ordered pair 4.41 and 2.82. And then I'm going to do it again with my other x value. 2 times 1.59 minus 6. And that gives me negative 2.82. So my other ordered pair is 1.59 and negative 2.82. Everybody still sort of okay? All right. This one was actually a little bit rough because we had to use the quadratic formula. Some of them are a lot easier because when we get to this step, they solve real easy, like either with a linear problem or they factor. So let's go to the top of the next page, because there's another one, and it factors. So just so you can see what a different one looks like. Are you doing it in the sample one? Yeah. Okay, so it says at the top, even though, oh, hold on, I'm frozen. Even though one or both of the equations in the system may not be linear, they may be nonlinear, the system can still, still be solved algebraically by substitution. That's what we just did. If you think back, way back to September, when we did linear systems, we did substitution, elimination, and solving by graphing. Well, what we're doing right here is just substitution. If the two things are both equal to y, then essentially what I'm doing is taking this y out and putting this in its place. So you're really just doing substitution. That's why you can set the two things equal to each other. So I'm going to set 2x minus 2 equal, uh, plus 2, sorry, equal to x squared minus 2x plus 5. Now right off the bat, I don't have any fractions to clear. I don't have any of that. I just have a regular run-of-the-mill quadratic equation. If it's quadratic, move everything to one side and factor it. So I'm going to subtract 2x, and I'm going to subtract 2. So I end up with 0 equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. That factors. So this one's pretty easy. Looking for factors of 3, that would combine to give me negative 4. Negative 3, negative 1. Which means my solutions are x equals 3, positive 3, and x equals positive 1. Those are my two x values. But remember, I need an ordered pair. So I'm going to take my x values, plug them back in, and find the y values that go with them. So I'm going to use the bottom equation because it's easier. So it's going to be 2 times 3 plus 2. So that's 8. So I have the ordered pair 3, 8. And the ordered pair 1, 4. Everybody okay? See, it's not as bad if you don't have to use a quadratic formula. Okay, so try number 12. I'm going to give you a minute or two to try number 12, and then I'll give you an answer. We'll see where everybody gets it. 